Hey, I'm Lauren from TastyPC.TV. Today I'm going to be doing a comparison of several popular 120mm case fans. You'll find the list of all the fans we'll be testing in the description below. So it's a brand new YouTube channel, the first video I'm ever making, so I'm going to be filming it in segments. If it's a little bit choppy, just bear with me. Also, when I'm nervous, I talk in this weird high-pitched voice, so if you find it a little bit difficult to understand me, let me know and I'll try and do something about it. So as well as this main comparison video, I'm also going to individually review several of the fans and do something I like to call the Silverstone Fog Test. And I'll be uploading these in a couple of days. Um, so I'm going to be doing the performance test on a H100 on an i5 2500K, lazily overclocked 4.6GHz at 1.35V using motherboard step up feature. Now I'll be running each of the fans for half an hour on Prime, taking the four core temps, finding the average core temp. Minusing the ambient room temperature to find the final delta CPU temp of all of the fans. So let's get started. So the first fans I'm testing are the standard core set ones that come with the H100. I'm honestly expecting these fans to be the best when it comes to core temps. However, they sound like a hairdryer and it's making fans that are cool and quiet, which is the challenge. So I'm testing all the fans at full speed. The room temperature is currently 21.7 degrees C and I've been running Prime 95 for half an hour now with these fans. So at the 30 minute mark, the four core temps I recorded were 52, 58, 60 and 58 degrees, giving me an average core temp of 57 degrees C. Then if I minus the ambient room temperature, which was 21.7 degrees, it gives me a final Delta CPU core temp of 35.3 degrees C for the Corsair fans. So the next fans I tested were the Fractal Design fans, or the FD FAN 120s. Now these are the fans that come with the Art Mini case, but are sold separately for around £7 each. Now these are rated as having 1000 RPM, with an airflow of 38.3 CFM, and have an average noise level of 15 decibels. So the room temperature is 21.6 degrees C, and same as before, Prime has been running for half an hour. So the temperatures I got at the 30 minute mark were 57, 63, 64 and 63, giving me an average core temp of 61.75 degrees. So if I take away the ambient room temperature which is 21.6 degrees, the fractal design fans get a total delta CPU temp of 40.15 degrees C, or rounded to 40.2. So here we have the Scythe Slipstream SY1225SL12SH fans. Now I've used these fans before and I have to say they are very loud. So these fans are rated at having 1900 RPM, giving a massive 110.31 CFM. They make an average noise of 37 decibels. You can get these fans for around 8 quid each. So room temperature is currently 21.1 degrees C. And at the 30 minute mark, the four core temps I got were 54, 58, 61 and 60, giving me an average core temperature of 58.25 degrees C. So minus in the ambient room temperature, the Scythe fans got a total delta CPU temp of 37.15 degrees, or rounded up to 37.2 degrees C. So next we have the Cooler Master Sickle Flow 120 fans. These fans are rated as having 2000 RPM, 69.69 CFM, and make an average noise of 19 decibels. Now these fans are actually very good value for money and they're available for less than £5 each. Now I wasn't expecting much from these but they actually perform rather well. The room temperature is currently 21.8 degrees C and at the 30 minute mark the four core temps I got were 55, 61, 62 and 61 giving me an average core temperature of 59.75 degrees C. Now minus in the ambient room temperature of 21.8 we get a final delta CPU temperature of 37.95 degrees C, or rounded up to 38 degrees. So onto my favourite looking fan, the Phobia Nano 2G. These fans are rated at 1500 RPM, have 64.16 CFM, and make an average noise of 25 decibels, and they cost around £12 each. So Prime has been running for half an hour, and the four core temps I got are 58, 63, 65 and 64 giving me average core temperature of 62.5 degrees. Minusing the room temperature, which is 21 degrees, it gives me a final delta CPU temperature of 41.5 degrees C for the phobias. So these are the brightest LED fans I'm testing, the Biffing Expected Pro LED fans. They're rated as having 1200 RPM, 56.22 CFM, 
and they have an average noise of 18.9 decibels, and you can get them for around £12 each. So the room is currently 21.2 degrees C, and at the 30 minute mark, the four core temps I got were 60, 66, 67 and 66, giving me an average core temperature of 64.75 degrees. Now minus in the ambient room temperature, the BitPhoenix fans got a final Delta CPU temp of 43.6. So onto the Noctua NFF12 fans. Now these are the most expensive fans I'm testing today, with each fan costing about £20 each. But I plan on doing a full comparison with these and the Silverstone air penetrators, so don't forget to subscribe. So the NFF12 fans are rated at having 1500 RPM, roughly 55 CFM, and make an average noise of 22.4 decibels. So the room temperature is 21.3 degrees. And at the 30 minute mark, the four core temps I got were 56, 62, 61 and 62, giving me average core temp of 60.25. So, minusing the ambient room temperature, the NFF12 has got a final delta CPU temp of 38.95 degrees, or rounded up to 39 degrees. So now for the last fan I'm going to be testing today, the Silverstone Air Penetrators, or AP121. Available for less than £15 each, the AP121 fans have a speed of 1500 RPM, an airflow of 35.36 CFM, and make an average noise of 22.4 decibels. So the room is currently 21.3 degrees C, and the four core temps I've gotten are 58, 64, 65, and 64, giving me an average core temperature of 62.75 degrees. So, minus in the ambient room temperature, the Silverstone Air Penetrator has got a total delta CPU temp of 41.45 degrees C, or rounded up to 41.5 degrees. So now we're going to move on to the sound test. So before I begin the conclusion, I thought I would mention that the microphone I use during the sound test isn't very good quality, so please only use the recordings as a rough guide. Now this is the part of the video where I tell you which fan is best, but unfortunately I can't as they all serve different purposes. It's only if you get the wrong fan for a specific situation that it can potentially become a bad purchasing decision. Like for example using the Scythe fans that I tested today in a home fitter PC. Now I know the question many of you have is whether I prefer the Noctua or the Silverstone fans, and honestly, without more testing, I can't answer that. But like I said before, I will be doing a full comparison video where I'm going to try and push these fans to their limit. But what I will tell you is if you purchase either of these fans, you will not be disappointed. So if you're looking for a budget fan, the Cooler Master Sickle Flow was amazing for its price and far exceeded my expectations. Now the Phobia Nano 2G and the Fit Bit Phoenix Spectre Pro fans, in my opinion, are the best looking. They've got good performance and reasonable sound levels. Now, I should mention that all the fans I tested today, none of them had a problem with the overclock I used. Now, I can't decide for you which fan is best for you. The results are there, it's up for you to analyse and interpret them for your situation. All you have to do now is factor in looks and price. So, I'd really like to do a second comparison video, where I test more fans, increase the overclock and use more radiators, but I can't justify spending the money if no one's going to be watching. So please subscribe. The more subscribers I get, the more motivated I'm going to be to make the videos. Um, but if you've got any suggestions or feedback for me, any fans or other products you'd like me to test or review, let me know. Thanks for watching.